Hey guys, this video is to train how to put the chord chart into the ProPresenter document so that it can be viewed uh, on the stage display from the stage uh, so that the band has the chords on the back screen. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, I just put this in uh, into ProPresenter as a in a previous video that I made and uh, this is The Lion and the Lamb, that song. So what I'm going to do is, uh, how I do that is, so I'm going to pull up the chord chart for that song. Okay, it, it might be much easier for you if, you if you print out the chord chart, but if I printed it out, you wouldn't be able to see it right now in the video. So I want to make sure you can see it. So uh, for instance, this intro is charted out in a way that is similar to the Nashville number system except that it doesn't use the numbers, it actually uses the chord names, but it, these designate measures. Um, so as you can see there's just some space before this A happens, uh, but what that really means is that that A happens on beat 3 of the 4-4 four, four measure. So uh, you'll definitely want to have some some musical background in order to be able to type these in correctly um, because uh, it's going to be hard for you if you can't follow, if you can't listen to a track and hear chord changes. Uh, it's going to be more difficult for you to do that, uh, for you to type these in correctly. So, um, so let the person know training you if that's not something you feel competent with or feel comfortable with. Uh, but if it is something you might be comfortable with, definitely give it a shot first. So, uh, The Lion and the Lamb starts with an intro in the key of G uh, that is G and then G A minor. C and C last two measures. So the way I'm going to type that in is so I'm going to minimize this so that I can go in here and on the intro slide I'm going to right click, click edit slide and I'm going to go right over here to the stage display notes and I'm going to start typing in the chords that go to that intro slide. So we said G and then it plays G to A minor two, C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four. Okay, so that is G, two, three, four, G, two, A, two, C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four. And we actually play that intro twice, so I'll write two X, just so that they know that we play it twice. All right. Once you're done typing into that, you need to hit enter in order for it to register changes you've made. Then you can select the next slide and you go on to the next slide and you type in whatever the chords are for that one. So this G two three four G two A two C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four. All right, so it's the same thing we typed in before. What I like to do is that I like to grab just a space, the line and the space, and I copy those so that, uh, and you can hit edit, copy, or you can hit command C and copy, uh, so that when I'm typing them in the future, so I know that this one, so if I'm typing, he's coming on the clouds, kingdom, king, kings and kingdoms will bow down, that is this much chords. There's four measures in that, that amount of words. The next set of words starts with an E minor. Every chain will break, and then I paste as broken hearts declare his praise. Okay, now I know because I know where the chord changes happen, I can say that E minor, two, three, four, E, two, D, his, praise. C happens after praise, so I'm going to put it on the next slide. C, two, three, can stop the Lord, D, almighty. All right, that's how I got that part. And then... I know that the song comes down on a G, 
Okay, so I can type that in to give the band a cue on that. Our God is the lion. The lion of Judah. Now the next measure, I'm going to start on the next slide because there's more words of this slide in that measure than this slide. So I'm going to start that chord here. Now keep in mind that as you're typing these chords, the way they will be viewed is by is, is that you can see the current words and current chords and next words and next chords. So anything you type that, um, for instance, if uh, well, for instance, what I just was doing, uh, the Lion of Judah. So if I were to put the E minor up here, if they switch early, the E minor is gone. But if the E minor was already down here, even though it overlaps on that word a little bit, they would be able to see it. And then when it switched, it would be the current slide. So always put chords further in advance than later than they should be. Because if you're relying on a chord to be able to play it that is already passed, you're out of luck. <laughs> so, uh, so here's what I do with uh, certain songs have, have measures. Now this won't apply to this song particularly, but there are certain songs that have uh, certain songs like a 4-4 four, four song that will have a 2-4 measure. If that's the case and we're playing in G and then there's a measure of D that is two beats, the way I have designated that, now it's up to you and the band, whoever, uh, however you all decide that you can read that well. The way I've done that is put two dots next to it. And that is easy to see that this is a full measure, this is only two beats long, and then there's another measure that starts after that. That's what I have always done. Uh, if there are holds, you type those in there. If there are, if you're giving dynamic changes, I have put uh, mostly full or mezzo forte. Um, I have put down. I have put out. I have put full. Um, I've put in. I've put drums. Uh, so there's many different cues you can give. Just make sure that your cues look different than your chords um, because that's going to be definitely confusing if you write uh, full or you know or something similar full mostly looks like F minor so obviously make sure your your dynamic directions and different things like that look different than your chords um, because you don't want to cause confusion because um, well, that would be even that would be worse than not having chords if you cause confusion with by putting the chords up there. So, uh, but that's really all there is to that. Once they have been typed in here and hit enter, uh, they will display as they are supposed to uh, with the current slide. Uh, so, it's uh, I believe that it's a huge benefit. There are downsides to it as well. Um, that it can make people uh, rely too heavily on the screen in the back. Um, if the projector quits or whatever, or it doesn't, the right slide uh, stage display doesn't get cued. Uh, you know, you can be out of luck because people were depending on that. Uh, but in my opinion, it's far better than music stands. Uh, definitely, the best option would be that people memorize their music. But I found uh, I found it to be true that on a volunteer basis, most people uh, are not able to do that. Uh, so this seemed uh, to be the best solution that I could come up with. So um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about doing this, make sure you talk to your trainer. Uh, talk to the person who's training you. Ask them your questions. And uh, I wish you the best of luck.